So guys, one of the best parts about FPV drones is getting together with other people, getting together with your friends, flying, hanging out, going to cool spots, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. When I first got into the hobby, I didn't really have any friends that were into the hobby. So when I started meeting other people that were into the same thing, that had the same interest, it was just so much more fun to it's do. nothing better than getting together with other people that love flying drones as much as you, hanging out for a good day of flying. Yeah. One of the worst things about flying is flying with other people. Yeah. Sometimes I just yeah. want to fly, and other people, they're distracting, they're plugging <laughs> in, they're messing up your video, they're flying around you. Yeah, sometimes it's too much. So flying with people can be both a really great experience, and it can also be kind of frustrating. So we got some tips for you guys today, some etiquette that will maximize your chances of having a good time when you're flying with other people. If you had a hobby before drones, like skateboarding or snowboarding or mountain biking or one of those hobbies that's a little bit more independent but you can do with other people you're familiar with the idea of this kind of unspoken code of conduct that you don't you don't drop in on a ramp while someone's on the ramp you don't snake someone's line on the mountain bike trail you don't cut someone off on the tow rope while, you know, all these things that you kind of get to know and when it comes to flying fpv drones and really all rc there are those same sorts of etiquette tips. So we kind of divided up these etiquette tips into categories. Uh, the first category that we thought of was just flying. Yeah, because, and this goes for not just FPV drones, but really all RC. There are certain pieces of etiquette that you want to keep in mind to be polite and safe. The most important part of this video, the thing we wanted to talk about right at the start, is do not fly at or over people. Yeah. I always yeah, like definitely. to think that at any time while I'm flying, the hand of God can reach down and unplug your battery, and what happens then? You're wherever you're going, that's where the quad's going. Yeah, it just becomes just a projectile. Keep, right. We've all seen that guy. Maybe you've been that guy. You don't want to be guy. that guy. You've been that guy. I've been that guy. It's <laughs> really, it feels really cool to fly <laughs> straight at the group of people and last minute, <laughs> turn around. It feels yeah. cool. But it's not cool. I was at a freestyle contest once and I was out there just doing my thing, spinning the quad around, and I was getting a little too close to the crowd, wasn't thinking straight, and the flight controller locked up and it just did a death spiral right into somebody's Dude, back. Dude, that stuff it was happens. so bad. You know, and he was a really good friend of mine. I felt terrible. I'm still apologizing to him this, this day. <laughs> it's making those mistakes that teach you the lesson. We're hoping that we can share some of our mistakes, share some of our tips, so that you don't have to make those mistakes to learn the lesson. Especially when you're just starting out, you don't necessarily know any better. Like, yeah. I don't think you were thinking about what oh, could no, that no, sort of happen, I'm, right? I'm totally responsible for like the first half of multi-GP rules. You know? <laughs> I mean, like you say that and you're like, ah, it's not gonna happen to me. Like it could be anything, guys. It could be your flight controller freaking out. It yeah. could it could actually be your battery leaves coming unconnected. Like those XT60s, they get squished and they get loose over time. It could be your prop spinning off because the nylock has worn off. A number of things could happen that essentially at any time just turns your drone into a brick. And whichever way it was going, uh-oh, you can't steer it anymore. It's just gonna keep going that way. And it's a very sharp brick. Right. Yeah. So I just always keep in mind that no matter where I'm flying, no matter what direction or trajectory I'm on, there's a chance that, oh, I'm just gonna keep going on that trajectory. There's just no reason to fly those certain trajectories. There's no reason to fly at the crowd and turn around. That's probably the worst thing you could do. Yeah. And similarly, just don't fly over people. What do they call it? Buzz in the tower. Don't buzz, <laughs> the, yeah, tower. Don't buzz the tower. Our second tip also has to do with safety and, and not wanting to hit people with drones. And that is, I'd say, don't walk out on an active spot, right? Oh man, it crashed. Oh, I got it. All right. Ah, oh, yeah, oh my God, you out there? Oh, Wait till everybody's landed before you go out there because not only are you putting yourself at risk, but you're also making the pilots have to stop and pay attention to where you are so they can't fly the spot. So. Yeah, and if you know if it's a smaller group, you know I'm always happy to like when Sean goes down. Sometimes if I'm not in the middle of something, he'll tell me I'm not. Oh, I'll just go park it somewhere and he can go get it. But if I'm in the middle of a flow or something and I don't want to break it, it's Good to fly with a friend that like understands like, oh, he's in the, he's in the middle of a line. Right. I'm just gonna wait. Not making for any surprises. Don't walk out and surprise people by being out there, you know? And don't put yourself at risk at the same time. Yeah. And conversely, I would say, you need to be courteous for the people that need to get their drones. Give other people that are crashing more a chance to go get it. That's right, just all you of... guys with your 6S batteries and your seven minute flight time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so the third tip under the flying category is 
you got to have a spotter. And yeah. that's that's the law. That is the law. It's really good to let people know where the soft targets are. You know, you want to make sure that people are aware of any people that are not necessarily with the group. All right, yeah, no, just stay uh, stay away from the back corner. There's a there's a thing pulling in. What kind of thing? No, it's like a, it's like a fire truck. That's fire uh, truck. No, it's like a giant. It's like a it's like a fire truck, and there's just Dalmatians. What? Like lined up on it. Just, it's, oh yeah, it's I see them. Oh my god, what are you kidding me? There's it's one of the there really are things. Dalmatians. I know, and then oh my gosh. you see there's actually a hot air balloon a hot air. Wow! out of the back of the fire truck. Yeah, so the group that you're with, they know because they watched this video, not to be <laughs> walking out onto the active field to, to get their quads that are crashed and stuff like that. So everyone that you're with should know better, but someone else that's just showing up for whatever reason, yeah, they probably don't dog. know the rules, right? Yeah. That's why parks seem like they could be a great place to fly, but most times, especially during weekends, it could be a pretty bad place. People pop out of nowhere in right. parks, like all the time. So you definitely want to scope out the spot to make sure that it is clear of people because you don't want to be flying around other people and you want to use the spot or you want to have someone there that's thinking about, hey, is there anything else going out there? And they can let you know like, oh, hey, 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 there's someone over there by that staircase. So go over to the left and steer clear of them, right? Yeah. One last courtesy I'd say you should keep in mind when you're, you're flying with other people is don't be the distracting person, right? Not everyone can handle flying and hearing you talk at the same time. I feel like that's pointed at me a little bit. No! <laughs> I'm <laughs> crazy when my freaking alarm. transmitter's going <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's always good to have. Oh, those noises! 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 Yeah, so think about your gear too. What's making beeps, what's making buzzes, and know that that could be distracting someone else. Some people can't handle it when you talk to them. And yeah, you so I don't think aware. I've got too many buzzes or beeps going on, but I do think I have a bad habit of while someone else is flying, I'll just start talking to you. I'll just start talking right. like you're flying. And some people can totally handle flying and listening and even having a conversation, but other people that's really distracting. Yeah. And I've definitely had someone be like, Drew, hey, let me just get my line in. <laughs> I can usually tell when you're in the flow because you don't talk to me back when I talk to you. Yeah, yeah. watch well, it and you just get good at tuning it out too. When I'm in the zone, <laughs> even talking to me all day long, I'm not, I don't hear you, I don't hear you. No, <laughs> not listening. So all these tips that we've covered so far really apply to all forms of RC, especially uh, flying RC, right? So whether you're flying line of sight or flying FPV, these are really good rules to keep in mind. Now, when you add FPV in the mix specifically, there's a whole nother set of courtesies that you need to keep in mind. You've got a more sensitive RF situation going on. So whereas controlling technology has really gotten to the point that you can have hundreds of people in the air flying at the same time, the FPV video technology isn't there. Whether you're flying analog or flying with digital, there's only so many people that can be in the air at the same time. And if you're not careful, you can really interfere with other people's receiving gear. So our next category is RF courtesy. You wanna be sure to divide the channels up it's best to really assign channels in advance. Know that Sean's gonna have R1 channel. I'm okay. usually on R1. I'll space out. I'll go to at least R3, or if I mean, if it's just the two of us, I can jump all the way to R7. I've kind of changed a little bit though, because you had mentioned to me recently since we've been doing this DJI stuff, is that since DJI powers up on basically race band six. There's all sorts of weird things to keep in mind with DJI that, that's one it's of them. It's kind of best if you're on DJI, if you pick a higher channel, because then when you have friends that are with you that are flying analog, they can mm -hmm. be on the lower channels and then when you plug in and you accidentally hit R6 as the public channel, you're not really blasting them. Yeah, there's there's a particular thing when you're using the DJI system. It kind of makes R6 unflyable. And to that end, I would say if you're flying a mix of analog and DJI pilots, the DJI pilots, it usually works out for us if they stay on the higher channels because six is blasted anyway. So the analog pilots, they can use one, two, three, four, maybe even five, and the DJI pilots would use the equivalent of race band six, seven, eight. So you gotta think about what channel you're powering up on, and you also need to think about what power level you are powering up on. Both analog systems and DJI systems let you select your power level. Basically, the more pilots that you have, the lower power level you should technically be on. Right. That way everybody can kind of intermingle together. So let's take analog, for example. When you're trying to fly maybe as much as six or eight people at a time during a race, you're gonna have to be on 25 milliwatts. You gotta get that under control because there's all sorts of weird harmonics and unexpected interferences. It just gets worse and worse the more power you have. The less people you have, the more room you have to bump up the power level. We usually, when we're doing a freestyle session, the most pilots we ever have flying at the same time would be four. And at that level, we can usually get away 
with everyone flying 200 milliwatts, maybe 400 milliwatts. If you're flying just two or three people, you might start bumping it up to six or 800 milliwatts. And it just depends on also what gear everyone is using. And you'll just kind of learn, like if you fly with the same three people, based on whatever antennas everyone is using, you might be able to get away with a little bit more than you can expect. But when you're flying with a new group of people, Play it on the safe side. Use less power and then start seeing if you can all bump it up together. But play nice, play fair, be courteous. Don't be that guy out there Don't blasting be me. 800 milliwatts. I'm guilty, I always Everyone else is trying to be nice. Max. Run 25, all the way and this guy, up stop. Here. Stop, it's just all <laughs> over. I'm just trying to fly and oh, there's Let's Fly RC coming in clear. <laughs> and then you also need to think about where your transmitter is, right? So if Sean's flying here, one of the worst things I could do is hold my drone right here and plug it up. Especially if he's using patch antennas, that's just emitting a lot of RF right in his situation. Oh, whoa, 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 video, 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 video! Oh! You wanna keep your transmitting drone away from the receiving antennas of other people. So a great practice to put in place is have a kind of designated takeoff and landing area. Yeah, cause that's, you don't wanna land near anybody either because. <laughs> right, yeah, that's definitely a problem. So you all take off together, that's great and all, and then, oh man, I nicked a prop, I gotta bring it in, and then I come land right at my feet, standing right next to him. I mean, I'm kinda lazy, I don't really like to get up out of my chair and get my quad, but. But if you come land right by everyone else, it's gonna mess them up. You're making sure that you're not plugging in right in someone else's face. Even so, you should always call out your plugins. Plugging in, race man three. Oh, wait, wait, I'm on three. Are you on three? I'll wait, okay. Don't take too long. You though, wait, all right, I wanna, all right. I'll be quick. Change. Yeah, all right, I'll be I mean, quick. Are you done I'm yet? almost done. No, no, I'm good. patiently waiting. Okay. Are you done yet? Not yet. I'm patient. <laughs> <laughs> the last few things we should talk about have to do with just being a good community member. You know, we've yeah. got a really great community with an FPV. We need to keep it that way. We need to make sure that we can keep flying where we have been flying. There's already enough negativity about drones in the news. We want to try to minimize that as much as possible so that the people that don't fly FPV aren't affected negatively by us. So being a good ambassador for the FPV community means be prepared to share the hobby with others that might walk up. No matter where you are, whether it's a park or a bando, at some point you'll, you'll probably have someone come up to you and say, what? is that that you're doing it is so cool it is so cool i love bringing an extra set of goggles or a screen because i just love to see the reaction that people have when you share the hobby with them and show them what you're doing mm -hmm. i've had police officers come up to you all the time and you can completely change their mood just by showing them what you're doing because it is so cool and they get blown away don't be that guy mm -hmm. that has the quad that always gets lost when you crash your friends aren't just gonna let you go look for your stuff by themselves they're gonna come and help you. And then Which everybody's- Which is the nice thing to do. Yeah. So this goes hand in hand with the tip that be kind if someone loses their stuff. Help them find help it. Help them find it. Right. But also don't be the guy that's always losing their stuff. Right. Have your beeper set up. Yep. Have your GoPro securely mounted. Have your battery securely plugged in. I'm looking at you, Vanover. He insists on just using a piece of foam and a battery strap. Oh my gosh. That's not, just use a 3D printed thing already. You're always losing the GoPro. We've had to help you look for like three times. God, if you wasn't so good at flying. I know, right? So good. The better you are flying, the more malarkey you get away with. It's not right. fair. If you want to keep flying at the spots you're flying at, make sure you clean up after yourself. Yeah. That's yeah. very important. Don't, you don't want don't to leave, leave props trash. everywhere. I mean, that's just a rule for being a good human. No matter what you do, if you're going to have a picnic in the park, don't leave all your wrappers and stuff like that. So right. same goes when you're flying with drones. I know where all your used props are. Yeah, I got a truck. I bought a truck just so I could throw them all in the back of the truck. <laughs> That's the, that's the prop can back there. That's where we keep a nice mound of props. Yep. So wrapping up, we have talked about flying etiquette, our F etiquette, and community etiquette. These are some tips that we think if you guys keep in mind, it's gonna make your experience flying with other people that much better. Now I know that with everything that's going on, you're probably spending less time flying with other people and more time flying yourself. I know a lot of people got into FPV because they picked up a new hobby while you, know, you maybe have more time to, to do things. But hopefully as we get back to a more normal state and you can start flying with other people. And that's gonna be a great time to keep all these tips in mind to make sure that when you do start flying with more people, you have a good time yourself and you don't ruin the time for anybody else. All right guys, I'm Ladrib. I'm Les Fly RC. Let us know, what, what did we forget? What's an etiquette tip that you think is super important to having a good time flying with other people? Leave it Leave in the comments. comments down below. Yeah, if you enjoyed this video, give us a like to let us know that you had a good time. 
and share this video with your friends that are getting into this so that they don't come stomping on your video Don't forget channel. to hit the bell and check out the Rotorite store at rotoriot.com. Links in the description. As always, we'll see you next time on Rotorite. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was having too much fun. <laughs>